I believe that if you're working in AI and you're not addressing what's coming with the automation of whole jobs and how we as humans are going to be able to live and thrive in that world, then you are not doing due diligence with what's coming. It is up to us, the creators, the technologists, the innovators that work in AI to help guide the rest of the world with how to adapt to this new world. And I think that even lawmakers, politicians, and the creators of legislation need to seek answers from the technologists. It's time to unite forces and play together and get ready for this incredible new world that is hurtling towards us at rapid speeds. I believe that artificial intelligence will transform our entire economy and what everyone is avoiding because it's such a heavy topic is how this new paradigm shift could create unprecedented levels of a level of wealth for everyone. What? Julia, are you crazy? Have you lost it? Let me explain what I mean. In today's video, which is on, yes, y'all want me to talk more about this. So it's on the post-labor society. And we're talking about how new decentralized systems could create universal wealth. Hey, if we haven't met, I'm Julia McCoy. I used to run a 100-person writing agency. I got out of that when I saw AI coming. I knew that GPT and what it was capable of would change content creation forever. And boy, did that hunch pay off. Now I work full time. I lead the strategy of our custom AI integrations at First Movers, which is where we help entrepreneurs, business owners, and marketing leaders become first movers in their category. We uncover novel solutions with customized AI build outs that revolutionize their operations and processes. Look, our calendar is filling up like crazy. As of right now, the consultations with us are completely free, but you must be a serious business with actual operations and marketing to automate. If that's you and you want to gain the First Movers advantage, we can grant your wish. Go to firstmovers.ai to learn more. All right, so two books that I definitely recommend, the contents of these books have definitely gone into today's topic, are these. The first one is Liquid Rain by an economist, Tim Rootman. This is a super hefty 400-page fiction that categorizes itself as neither dystopian nor utopian. It's a sci-fi novel about technology, our future, and AI, and it presents a very real potential of living in the future of something called ungovernance, where there is decentralization and ownership through tokenization, DAOs, shareholder ownership in this new society. I think that you learn a lot of truth from fiction, so that book is definitely a good one. And then this one, A Brief History of Neoliberalism, it's a short, easy read, really opened my eyes to how our society and our economy through the convergence of all kinds of world and US leaders, as well as belief systems, all of that kind of converged into a grassroots effort to build neoliberalism, which is a model we've been running in since the 1980s. Now, neoliberalism, which came from classical and social liberalism and a desire to avoid the economic failures of the 1930s and the Great Depression. It's really an underlying way to control the free market. The end of the Cold War is when neoliberalism went on the rise. And it does include deregulation, free trade, globalization, reductions in government spending, but it's designed around increasing the role of the private sector in our economy and society at large. It definitely works to establish institutions, and it is a very heavily political framework. Milton Freeman, Margaret Thatcher, even Ronald Reagan were associated with the new meaning of neoliberalism that emerged in the 80s. But here's the thing. This system was designed to prioritize markets over humans. And it's why we are living in what I would consider a fairly broken society right now. And all you have to do is look at the numbers to prove that point to be true. So it's a fact that only about 8,000 companies are publicly traded right now. That means that a lot of wealth building opportunities are locked away from people. Sure, there are more investing apps starting to come out, more ways to invest in companies, but still a lot of companies 
are locked away from the public. And then when you look at the state of workers, it makes sense that neoliberalism has promoted markets over humans because most people actually lack real economic agency. Economic agency is when you feel in control of your own life and you are not tied to have to show up heavily for a paycheck in a job you may not even like. That is low economic agency and that is what a lot of people are stuck in today. The state of work is enough to show you this. So in 2023, Gallup did a study that showed that only 21% of people are engaged and productive at their job. This accounts for almost $2 trillion lost globally and over 60% of people reporting that they are completely emotionally detached at work. 19% of those people classify themselves as completely miserable. That's almost a quarter of everyone at work. But here's the thing. We are on an economic operating system that wasn't designed for the AIH. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I believe that if we, the people working in AI, innovating new solutions that will affect people's jobs, if we are not banding together to think of solutions to install in the new era, in the post-labor economy, then we are not doing our fellow humans justice. We have to think about this and band together. Seriously, I mean that. If you have thoughts on what the post-labor economy should look like, I'd love to hear from you in the comments of this video. Share your frameworks and your thoughts. Make them public. I am working on developing my thoughts and making them public when I think they make sense. I don't want to gate this from anyone. So we're entering an age that is best defined as the great decoupling, where human labor becomes increasingly disconnected from economic value creation. With AI diagnosing diseases arguably better than doctors, Doctors, with ChatGPT writing content better than a lot of human copywriters, with robots working in factories to restock, capable of working day and night, not getting sick or hungry, we're absolutely looking at human labor being made redundant. But let me tell you this, we should be looking at it as a way to regain and recover our freedom instead of mere job loss. And it should be in our minds that we have the opportunity to design systems where technological not human productivity can create universal prosperity. So if we think of post-labor economics, instead of protecting old jobs or redistributing wealth, we need to build new systems designed for the AI age. And I see this foundation built on four key principles. First, a default decentralization, where we can push economic decisions to a local level. We have autonomous AI arguably AGI or even ASI involved in making those decisions and running the governance of these programs. AGI or ASI could run DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, and run school districts, the economics of cities, arguably better than human politicians. And then number two, we need radical transparency for this to work. We need all economic information made public. If we're running AGI through DAOs, Imagine all that economic information made public. The fictional novel I brought up at the beginning of this video, Liquid Rain, talks about some of this. And in the book I'm working on with Dave Shapiro called The Great Decoupling, Dave has beautifully written some fiction scenarios that portray this as a real world. How do we enable truly efficient, transparent markets where the entire world gets to see Let's say, for example, AGI making a trade that humanity benefits from and the dividends flow through as a UBI. What if everyone could see that happen? That is transparency at an economic level we have never had. Number three, we need direct flows between value. No more intermediaries. We don't need them in a post-labor economy. Imagine creators directly connected to the beneficiary involved in that transaction. Imagine wealth circulating inside communities. Simplify value chains. That is what needs to occur in the post-labor economy. And by the way, with things like blockchain and cryptocurrency, this could easily happen. And finally, number four, something I believe we have lost through the industrial revolution and what has happened through neoliberalism and the push for private sectors. We've lost this and we need to gain it back. Number four is universal economic agency. We need to ensure broad and total access to opportunities. 
And if we have something like AGI or even ASI at our fingertips, I mean, we could harness it to give everyone an equal, fair opportunity. Again, no more intermediaries, no more politicians. I think Joe Rogan was actually onto something when he said in spring 2024 in an interview with some AI safety experts, what if we had AGI run the government? Yeah, AGI cratics could be a thing. So how do we actually make all this work? That's the question, right? Well, I believe there's a solution. And the main solution is if we tokenize everything, and I mean everything. Imagine if every single productive enterprise out there could be invested in, not just public companies, through the blockchain and tokenization. We could fragment ownership of the productivity that comes from AI, not humans, back into the pockets of almost every human. This is possible if everything becomes tokenized, if small businesses themselves become investable, if communities can own local resources, if value creators can capture their worth, if we know that there are only 8,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, then we know that 99% of businesses can't even be invested in. If we don't need humans to produce capital, we can replace that with automation and AI. We can take the dividends from that machine-driven profit and tokenize almost everything. That is called tokenomics, and that, I believe, is the future of economics. Tokenomics is an investment-based futuristic model that could solve many problems in the problem of economic agency where people feel in control of their lives. It could solve a lot of problems in that simultaneously. Instead of making humans passive recipients of UBI, which I think is dangerous, we need to heighten economic agency, not lower it. And UBI passively distributed that potentially makes people too dependent on the government is not in and of itself a healthy thing. But tokenomics is. It gives people economic agency. It puts them in the seat of control. And if we have total transparency happening, will they know where their funds are coming from? They are in control of where they even choose to invest in. Imagine through tokenization and the blockchain that everything we see, everything around us becomes investable. Everything of value becomes a liquid tradable asset. And again, if automation is driving the actual output, not human labor, then we have the chance to decouple capital itself from human productivity. By the way, that's like the most important piece of all of this. So make sure that's the piece you follow. If you understand that all jobs and all work is at a point of total automation, then I believe you will start to see the big picture here where economic agency itself changes and how we define our value completely changes from the magic of total automation, completely reshaping capital itself. We're not there yet, but I believe we are arriving at that future very soon. And this is why we need to be talking about this now. Then what if we had a form of UBI as seed capital and we could control through tokenization and with superhuman AI assistance to make those investment calls, we could turn UBI into as Elon Musk calls it, UHI, universal high income, and literally have wealth redistributed to almost all and literally have a healthy form of wealth redistribution to all of society. But we need new systems built for this and we need them underway now. We need blockchain-based economic platforms. We need updated legal frameworks. We need local economic sovereignty. We need transparent governance tools, and we need to think about automated value distribution. What's crazy is that the technology for a lot of this already exists. We just need to piece it together in a way that makes sense. I believe if we started with local experiments, started small, we could see this actually work inside communities and we can measure and adjust the results. What excites me is that through the power of automation, we actually have the chance to build a completely new economic structure, one that doesn't necessarily take from the rich and one that doesn't hurt the poor. We can take the profits that automation brings us and have them flow in a whole new way to society in a way that's transparent, accessible, and opens up opportunities. The future of wealth doesn't have to be concentrated. It can work for everyone. That is my belief. That is the abundant future I think we are looking at thanks to AI. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you have thoughts on this, let me know. I have some very smart people that watch my YouTube channel. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are your thoughts on the future of the post-labor economy? And as always, if you haven't hit subscribe, do that here on YouTube at Julie McCoy, and I'll see you 
down the next rabbit hole.